Hello everybody and welcome to the beginning of a new and very exciting series here on the channel. I'm calling it Affordable Dream Cars. It is really what it says on the tin. I'm going to be looking at an incredible variety of vehicles which I think are dream cars for many. They're not all the same, they're not all supercars, some are muscle cars, some are classic cars, but for different people they are all dream cars. They're going to have different budgets. I'm capping this series at £100,000 because anything beyond that I think is probably unrealistic for most people. But all the cars I've reviewed in this series so far are actually less than half that. And that means that for many people they are potentially within reach. And I'm going to be looking at vehicles, some of which I've already reviewed, some of which are new to the channel, and not just looking at how they drive, what they look like and all that usual stuff, but also what they're like to own. How affordable are they really? What deals can be had and what are they like to maintain? Are they really the dream you'd hope they would be or can they quickly become a nightmare? But before we get started, there is something very important that I want to say. Things are pretty interesting here in the UK at the moment, like they are in much of the rest of the world. It's an especially difficult time for self-employed types like me and most of the content creators that you'll see here on YouTube. It's for that reason that I am especially grateful to you for watching my videos this month in particular. And I'm thankful regardless of whether this is the first video of mine that you've seen or you've been here since the very beginning. Building up a YouTube channel takes an awful lot of time effort and money. The fact is that many of the YouTubers that I know still don't make any money from their channels, they just try and lose as little as they possibly can. In trying times like these I know a lot of people turn to YouTube for their entertainment and to stop them from going stir crazy and so it's for that reason that I would encourage people to support the content creators that they know and love by doing just small things. Let that advert at the beginning of the video run. If there's one at the end watch that too. It doesn't cost you anything more but it can really make a difference to the creators that you love. And if there's a company sponsoring them, think how much it's taken for that company to give that person money at a time when they might not be making an awful lot themselves. All of us creators are really super grateful to the people that support us because they make a difference and they allow us to do what we love and we know most of you do too. So a big thank you to them. That's enough from me. Please enjoy a video on a wonderful car. Hello everybody, even a damp and inclement British day like today is a good one when you're behind the wheel of an Aston Martin. Now I've covered a number of Astons on this channel in the past and a number of Vantages, but when this car's owner Joe got in touch with me and told me what he had, I leapt at the opportunity to drive it. And this car fits right in with my little series on affordable dream cars because this is Joe's dream car. He spent his entire career thinking he'd never have anything quite close to this. But when he reached retirement age, he decided that he probably should if he could. And so he made the decision to go and buy himself a then brand spanking new Aston Martin V8 Vantage. A decision I'm sure you all understand I am completely behind. He is the one and only owner of this car, having had it for 10 years. But this is no ordinary garden variety V8 Vantage. A quick glance at it and you might think it's simply a nicely specified car with a couple of classic touches like the Aston Martin Owners Club badge on the front and some nice silver bright work in place of the usual modern trend for dark and black and grey and that's about it. But look a little closer and there are a few hints that this car is not entirely standard. The biggest and most obvious is the badge at the back saying supercharged 600 horsepower. You see this car has received a bit of an upgrade courtesy of the good people at GMR and rather than the usual 420 horsepower that this 4.7 litre produces it's now making that 600 but that isn't why Joe put the kit on this car. It's about £20,000 to do that and the reason he wanted that wasn't the power figure it was the torque. You see, this car is now running 50% 
more torque than standard. In fact, put one of these kits even on a 4.3 and you'll be running over 450 pound foot. That's 100 pound foot more than this should make as standard. That's a lot. It's an Eaton type charger too, which means unlike the supercharger I had in my M3, this does a lot to bolster the car's low and mid range, which Joe always felt was lacking for a relatively large, by European standards, capacity V8. Now remember that little talk we had earlier about videos and sponsors? Well, fortunately I've been able to get BOTB to sponsor this video and a few other entries in this series. If you haven't heard of those people before, where have you been? They have given away tens of millions of pounds worth of prizes. And the one I want to tell you about today is their Aston Martin V8 Vantage. Not the old one, the new one. £125,000 worth of car, and you could win it for £5.95, or the price of one toilet roll. The new Aston Martin is a 500 horsepower British built monster. It's an incredible thing. If you want to be in for a chance of winning, you do have to go on BOTB's website. You're going to have to play a spot the ball competition, which you need to be 16 or over to enter. It is a worldwide competition. Your first year of insurance is included. You also have the chance to win 20 grand cash in the boot. And right about now, I'm pretty confident that a brand new Aston Martin with 20 grand in it and a year's insurance would certainly lift my spirit. So, if you fancy having a chance to win your own, get on the website, and if an Aston Martin doesn't really float your boat, they've got plenty of other cars to choose from as well. Now, back to the action. And that's not the only thing that Joe has changed about this car, and there's a few things about this Aston which are different to any other I've driven before, and so make this review particularly worthwhile. This is the first V8 Vantage convertible that I've driven. And historically, if you'd asked me, I would say that the convertible has no interest to me, because with the roof up, it just doesn't look right but with the roof down those little bubbles at the back it looks utterly sensational and this fairly classic color combo of grigio titanio which is a ferrari color and this beautiful red interior it's a hell of a thing this car is also equipped with the sport shift gearbox the first generation sport shift this is a six-speed versus the seven-speed Graziano Sport Shift 2 that you got in the V8 Vantage S. Now, I really didn't like that gearbox, and I must say I'm not particularly in love with this one. However, there are plenty of people out there, Joe included, for whom a manual simply isn't an option. And I have to say that with the extra torque that that supercharger produces, changing gear isn't as much of a necessity as it might be with the standard vehicle. Other upgrades to this car include some visual tweaks in the form of some carbon fibre at the front and at the back. The diffuser being particularly important because it helps cool the rear axle where the gearbox is situated. When you're running this much more power, well, every little bit of extra cooling I think is well worth having. More interestingly, the car also has a set of carbon ceramics on it, and they are not factory fitment. They're from a company called Surface Transform, and although I haven't begun to press on yet, at normal speeds, which is where carbons can often struggle, they're actually very good. They don't really seem to squeal that much, and they respond nicely. Pedal's very easy to modulate. It's lovely. As you may have guessed, the exhaust has also seen some minor modification. It's a valve setup and right now we're listening to it with the valves closed. Now, Joe certainly did not skimp on the specification of this car when he bought it. It's about the only V8 Vantage I think I've ever seen which has the B&O sound system, which sounds pretty good and has very trick tweeters that rise and fall. I've seen that in a few cars, the new Audi RS6 has them in certain specs, and the DBS I always remember as being the car that had them. In fact, if I'm being completely honest, the, the B&O tweeters is still a large part of the reason that I desperately want a DBS. Downshifts for this gearbox seem to be no problem at all. It makes a lovely little blip and it's reasonably quick. However, it's the upshifts where it struggles. Now, I do have to be fair to this gearbox and say that it's not currently standard. It has different software on it which has been deliberately slowed down in order to make the changes a little smoother rather than trying to rush itself and perhaps that's the right decision to have made. The car is beautifully damped and this is something that both Joe and myself agree on. 
The V8 Vantage S went a little bit too far in the suspension department. It's a stunning car and a wonderful thing to behold, but it's just a little bit too stiff for an Aston Martin. This is not exactly soft, but it is very supple. Now Joe also does something that I, I love seeing with cars, which is that he takes it out, he uses it, he enjoys it, and he uses it to help raise a little bit of money for charity. You may wonder how someone does that with a relatively plain looking Aston Martin, but stay with me, this car does have some more secrets. The car is actually better in manual mode than it is in auto, for the simple reason that you know when it's going to try and change gear, you can lift off to ease the upshift a little bit, and it doesn't surprise you with trying to jerk you about. So with this slightly damp and greasy road, how has the supercharger affected the way the Vantage drives? Let's find out. Well, you certainly don't need to press the pedal down that far to get it to move. I have been forewarned that this thing can be a little bit larry, so I'm exercising some caution because those roads are reasonably treacherous. I'm also resisting the temptation to downshift, which in an Aston V8 is exactly what I need to do right about now, but with this thing, not so much. Let's see what she's got. So 2,500 RPM. Oh, she really does pull, and you can feel it. Just wanting to spin up that rear. It's effortless. Absolutely effortless. If you want the best performance, it is still a vehicle which really needs revving out, but the supercharger has removed the requirement to rev it out if you want to make decent progress. And it sounds utterly delicious. So the exhaust has equal length manifolds, it's also got a small crossover in it, and a valve back box which is controlled by a small remote. The result is wonderful. All of the good bits about a V8 Vantage still seem to be intact, the wonderful steering, the fantastic chassis, which doesn't really seem to have suffered that much from having the roof lopped off. I have to remember that these cars are considerably heavier than the coupe, and with the supercharger on it, you wouldn't really know. Unfortunately, today is not the right day to press on too hard, so I couldn't tell you how the extra weight in the front has affected the car. Now, as part of this series on affordable dream cars, we're also looking at the reality of ownership. And the good news is, is that this car has actually been very decent to Joe. In the early days, when the car was still under its original warranty, it had some problems with the sports shift gearbox, it would basically lock itself in gear and then not want to start, and all sorts of silly things. Quite a few different items were replaced, including the pump, which is known to be troublesome. And after that, it's behaved itself. It is on its second clutch. The first one wore to about 50% and Aston said it needed replacing. And to be fair, once it was replaced, the car behaved a lot better. Putting a clutch on one of these is going to cost you a few thousand pounds. So if you're looking at buying one, just check that that's been done either recently or that you're happy it's still in good condition. Any car like this is probably worthwhile getting a specialist inspection. Someone like my friends at Stratton Motor Company, I'm sure, will happily do that for you, or your local Aston dealer, although I suspect you may be better off trying to find an independent. Servicing costs on these really do vary, to the extent that I don't really want to quote any numbers. If I were to buy one of these, I'd want to put away at least about £1,000 a year, from which, on minor services and all that jazz, you'll probably get a reasonable amount of change. Prices of vantages have dropped recently, but only after a decade of holding fairly firm. Early examples for private sale can be had at just over 20 grand, with most dealers usually asking around the 25 to 30 mark. The Vantage was facelifted in 2009, which brought a raft of new updates, including the 4.7 litre engine with more power and torque than the earlier 4.3. You got some extra details on the exterior and a revised interior, which was then changed again fairly late in the model's run. Facelift cars are more desirable and budget around about £10,000 more than an equivalent 4.3 as a guideline. 
expect to pay a small premium for roadsters, and as with any car that was on sale for over a decade, there are also a host of special editions to look out for, including a Pro Drive version and several N models, the N400, 420 and 430. You've also got the crazy V12, which is going to cost more to buy and run, but the good news is that these days all of the Vantage range is depreciating at a glacial rate, meaning that even finance can be surprisingly cheap if you decide to go that route. i got to say, I really do like these brakes. I wouldn't know that they were ceramics if you didn't tell me, and that is a very high compliment. The gearbox, once you get into a rhythm with it, it doesn't ruin proceedings. I'd still prefer a manual. That is me. Downshifts are glorious, and the sound this thing makes is utterly wonderful. You wouldn't really know that the performance of this thing was boosted unless you'd driven the standard items, because this car does what you think an Aston would do. It drives in a very similar fashion to the V12, it has plenty of torque available from low down, and actually, it still grips pretty well, but I did promise you that this car is hiding something of a party piece. Allow me to show you. Now, what's about to follow should be taken as a stern warning for any ladies watching who've got men in their lives that have just told them they're about to go and self-isolate in the garage for a couple of weeks. You see, Joe is a man that has a passion for engineering. And any man that has a love of engineering, gadgets, and an Aston Martin, well, there is only ever going to be one conclusion. Now, eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed the fact that this is rather out of place in this car because that doesn't actually control the gears in the car. In an Aston Martin Vantage, the gears are controlled by these buttons and these paddles on the steering wheel. Uh, this is, in fact, a hint of what is to come. You have here a selection of very authentic looking toggle switches which control a variety of different lights and different functions. You have next door the erstwhile co-pilot grommet perched on something very precarious looking that we're going to get to in a little bit. But this car has now been set up in show mode. First and most obvious thing you have here in place of the usual windshield this bulletproof screen which has been fired upon and somebody's thrown a bowler hat at it. Very inconsiderate of them, that seems to have gone clean through. The car's also grown. He's very classic looking, little knockoff wheel pieces. And at the back, the exhaust has grown, a pair of flamethrowers, and it will also spit water on command. Very effective very good at children's parties. Now in case you have any sort of cyclists getting a bit too close to you or other road users that you're not fond of you also have a way of gently disabling their legs or vehicles as seen here. Rather effective also good if you're desperate for a smoothie or anything like that. Towards the front we have the signs of a couple of gentle battles too on the windscreen and here and showing that the car has teeth too You've got some rocket launchers, you've also got a machine gun, a secondary water spray, and at the front, just in case Vossa or the DVLA are hot on your heels, you have of course the customary revolving number plate. And perhaps most importantly, if you're tiring of Grummet's whining, what he's perched on actually works. There we have it. One man's dream, and let's face it, that brings a smile to my face. I hope it has to yours, and I think this is well worth the considerable amount of time and effort that Joe's spent. All of these devices are of his own creation, and let's face it, having fun with cars is what it's all about, isn't it? So now, back to the action. That is Joe's dream car, and I cannot think of a better way to spend a retirement. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.